Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about how the Dodge Challenger SRT Demon is able to achieve a 0-60 to time of just 2.3 seconds as a rear wheel drive vehicle. Now before we get into it and exactly how it does it, I want to read a quote from Dodge's press release on this vehicle uh, because I think there's going to be some confusion as far as how capable this vehicle is in different scenarios. People are probably going to complain that you know it can't take corners well. Uh, so just listen to this quote from the press release. The main mission of the 2018 Dodge Challenger SRT Demon is to cover the quarter mile as quickly as possible. So from a design standpoint, this vehicle was designed to be the fastest production car across the quarter mile. And that's what it did. It hit a quarter mile time of 9.65 seconds at 140 miles per hour. It was designed as a drag strip car, not as a track car. Um, so from a design perspective, that's what its goal was. So of course it's not designed and going to excel well in other areas. Its pure purpose is to be a drag strip car. They have the Dodge uh, Viper or had the Dodge Viper uh, for you know the track car that was designed as a track car. This is designed as a drag car. Now, how does it do that? Well, in order to have the maximum force at the rear wheels to accelerate this vehicle, you need two things. The maximum force that this vehicle can apply is equal to the amount of weight resting on that rear tire multiplied by the frictional coefficient of that rear tire or the rear tires, both tires, the rear axle. And so you need to maximize both of those. You need to maximize the amount of weight resting on that rear wheel, and you need to maximize the frictional coefficient of the tire. So you need to have super wide, super sticky tires. So how do they get the weight to all rest on that rear tire? And they actually do do this, uh, which is pretty cool. So what they've done versus the Hellcat, they've lowered the spring rates in the rear by 28%, lowered the spring rates in the front by 35%, lowered the anti-roll bar uh, down 44% in the rear, down 75% in the front. And so what this does by lowering these spring rates is it allows the vehicle to arch back, to kind of prop up as it launches and have that allow that weight transfer to occur to go towards those rear wheels. The other thing they've done uh, with the dampers is they have firmed up the uh, rebound and compression in the rear, they have softened the rebound in the front, and they have firm compression in the front. So what this means is it's gonna be stable in the rear, in the front it's going to allow it to lift up, that's gonna be your rebound, compression is when you compress the shock, and so it's going to allow it to lift up, get all of that weight on that rear tire, let that center of gravity pivot back, uh, as you're accelerating, so all of the load is going to be on those rear tires, and it actually will lift up the front wheel. It's the first production car to do this. I think they say 2.92 feet is how long they can carry the front wheel in the air. So they're able to transfer all of the load of this vehicle onto the rear uh, tires, which is super cool. And part of the way they do that is through the suspension design uh, versus the uh, Hellcat. Now, once you come back down and you let off full throttle, they're actually going to stiffen up uh, that front rebound so that the car is more stable. Uh, but while you're at full throttle, they're going to leave it soft so that you can have that uh, vehicle, you know, tilt back, lean back, uh, and get all of that weight as much as possible onto those rear wheels. Now, as far as the tires, uh, these are street legal Nitto drag radials. So kind of crazy. Uh, this is a production first for a production vehicle to have drag radials. Uh, they're 315s over 40. The compound and sidewall construction completely unique to this vehicle. Um, super cool. You can see kind of the tire twisting uh, as it's launching like you see in uh, NHRA top fuel cars if you ever see the slow-mo videos of their tires. So super cool to be able to see that. It's got a 15% larger contact patch versus the Hellcat. Uh, it's able to achieve a 40% greater launch force and supposedly has over two times the grip of the Hellcat with these tires. So super sticky drag tires put on there. Um, and they are claiming a peak uh, G-force of 1.8 Gs at launch, the highest of any production car. Now we're gonna talk about why this number right here, this 1.8 G, it sounds stupid impressive. It is stupid impressive, uh, but it's for a very, very short duration. So I don't think it's all that significant to talk about. Um, analyzing the G-forces here. So looking at the zero to 30 time of one second, uh, if we take the average acceleration, that's equal to the difference in velocity divided by how much time that takes. So 30 miles per hour equals 44 feet per second divided by 1. 44 divided by 32.2 feet per second. That gives us 1.37 
Jeez, that's a pretty good three. Speaking of pretty good uh, drawing, I think this is the first time I've ever drawn a vehicle that I think I could, you know, tell someone what vehicle is that, and I think most of them would say Challenger, so I think it's pretty cool uh, that it looks somewhat relevant to a Challenger versus the rest of all my drawings. Anyways, moving on, 1.37 Gs, 0 to th uh, 30, 0 to 60, 2.3 seconds, that is equal to 1.19 Gs when we do the math as far as acceleration. Remember, they're saying a peak of 1.8. Uh, and here's the thing, this is excluding one foot of rollout. So it's actually going to be a little bit longer than that, and it's actually going to be a bit longer than that. So how do we measure uh, the amount of time it took excluding that rollout? Well, if we look at the 30 to 60 time, uh, that's not going to have any rollout included in it. And it's able to do 60 and 2.3, 30 and 1, subtract the difference is 1.3 seconds. So if we do the math, 44 feet per second in 1.3 seconds, that's going to give us a g-force of 1.05 g's. That's the average g-force that the car is accelerating from 30 to 60 miles per hour. So Dodge is claiming a peak g-force of 1.8 g's. That's right at the initial launch. It's kind of this shock of acceleration right at the very beginning, very brief moment. Uh, and then you can see the average g-force is going to be much lower. Uh, you know, still extremely impressive. The fact that it's accelerating over one g from 30 to 60 miles per hour is pretty insane, especially for a rear wheel drive vehicle. So very cool what they've been able to do uh, with these super sticky tires and the soft suspension to get that rear axle loaded up. Looking at the quarter mile time, uh, the Tesla P100D, which you know would be the closest competitor as far as the zero to 60 time of 2.3 seconds, is able to hit the quarter mile in 10.5 at 125 miles per hour. This is hitting it at 9.65 seconds at 140 miles per hour. The Tesla is actually quicker to 30 miles per hour. And I was looking at Motor Trends data of which they published on their article and they had a peak G4 shown slightly over 1.4 Gs. So again, that's why I kind of question this 1.8 Gs. I think a lot of people are gonna be saying, oh, this car accelerates at 1.8 Gs. And sure, it may hit that on a drag strip in perfect conditions um, for an extremely short moment of time, but you're not gonna be in the car uh, just driving it down the highway floor it and experience uh, 1.8 Gs. You'll experience 1 G, which is very cool, uh, but not 1.8. Uh, so either way, it's an insane car. Very cool what Dodge has done. I mean, it's, it's a passion project. It's meant to build hype from a marketing standpoint about the brand Dodge, and it's certainly doing that. It's cool to see a company just, you know, let's throw everything we have at the world's fastest drag car and just go for it. And they did it. Uh, they achieved the results, and I think that's cool to do. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.